Dennis Garrity, and I'm the uh, Drylands Ambassador for the UNCCD. But um, my true passion is the development of uh, evergreen agriculture systems in Africa. And uh, I've been here to talk about the tremendous um, efforts of millions of farmers across the, the continent in actually <clears throat> adopting practices that involve the incorporation of trees into their cropping systems, which has had transformative effects. And when we speak of regenerative agriculture, these are classic cases where farmers can increase the value of their crop yields, increase the livestock production, uh, harvest additional fuel wood for their families, and produce timber and other tree products simply by incorporating the right kinds of trees into their croplands. And this has now been done by millions of farmers in many countries across the continent and has the potential to reach scores of millions of farmers and hundreds of millions of hectares, restoring the health of the land while increasing the income and the livelihoods of the people. And the fact that it's been spreading virally among farmers in many countries is clear evidence that when farmers learn about the practices, they can readily adopt them without even having to, uh, to invest cash into uh, the process. And this is, this is a practice we call farmer-managed natural regeneration. It's the selection of natural trees that grow in croplands and um, nurturing them, pruning them, managing them so that they are compatible with the crops and improve the crop yields while they're providing these other benefits. When we talk about climate change, we're talking about two things. One is adaptation to the, to the effects of climate change, and the other is mitigating the, um, the, uh, the amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And what is really wonderful about these regenerative technologies is they hit both buttons. They adapt the systems, they buffer them to, uh, to crop, um, crop uh, uh, losses due to drought uh, very effectively, and they also store carbon in the trees, which can be a means of reducing the CO2 emissions to the atmosphere. So these are also reasons why the global community is increasingly getting interested in <clears throat> regenerative technologies that farmers have found to be useful for their own families. And farmers, but we're talking about millions of farmers um, across, well, many the, countries in Africa. Many countries, yeah. especially yeah. the yeah. Sahel regions. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. We just came out of a uh, presentation that you yes. gave yes. Uh, with the uh, UN Development Program, uh, where you presented a, a case that's currently happening in uh, Niger. Yes. And which is, can you please yeah, talk yeah. to share on this? Well, this Niger is a country right on the edge of the Sahara Desert, and um, it was extremely affected by a cycle of droughts in the 1970s and 1980s, which um, caused the, the, the land to go degraded and the trees to be stripped from the land. And colleagues who developed um, pilot projects to regenerate trees and croplands at that time uh, experimented with how villagers could easily adopt these techniques. And that began to spread during the 1990s. It was up to about 5 million hectares by 2009. And we've just remapped Niger and find that there's over 7 million hectares of land in which farm families, and these are very poor farm families, with maybe one, two, three hectares of land that have adopted these practices. So knowing that this is about the poorest country in the world, we are confident that practices of this nature can be adopted by millions of farmers in countries uh, all over the world, and particularly in the drylands of Africa. The evergreening technologies that I'm speaking about, the natural regeneration of trees in croplands, has dramatically improved the food security of these families because they can produce more uh, of their grain crops more reliably with, 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 um, with, with drought stress. So um, it has been a, a major boon to food security in Niger. And, and so you were showing us a, a map earlier on um, where it really shows that there are two um, 
there are two parts of Africa. Mm. So mm. we're seeing an increase in vegetation in certain areas and a, a strong decrease yes. uh, in other yes. areas. So we're looking at the Sahel region, which is the uh, top uh, northern sub-Saharan part of Africa, notably where there is the uh, famous uh, Great Green Wall uh, that is uh, yeah, a project yeah. that's being launched by the UN uh, Food and Agriculture Organization that launched in uh, 2008. So it's basically a huge project to plant uh, a great barrier of trees between uh, Senegal in West Africa to Eritrea, uh, the uh, coastal country uh, just on the Red Sea, so in, in East Africa. And we can really see that um, this project is uh, working. Uh, trees are proliferating um, and these trees are fertilizing soils uh, in a way that uh, smallhold farmers are increasing food production and food production that is uh, healthy, uh, food production that doesn't rely on chemical influence for instance. And so we were talking, you were talking earlier on about the role of trees uh, in mitigating um, hazardous, the use of hazardous chemicals, uh -huh. the use of uh -huh. rather expensive chemicals as well. Yes. Yes. Our mission now is to spread that technology to many tens of millions more farm families. So there's a lot of work to be done because although we speak of millions of hectares that have adopted the technologies, there are many, many millions of hectares that are still um, uh, in need of uh, land restoration and many millions of people who are still unaware of the technologies that could help them to restore the health of their land. Mm. So we've got a big big mission ahead of us yet and uh, lots and lots of work to do. Uh, soils store uh, five times uh, more carbon than the atmosphere can. Um, it can also uh, store nitrous oxides, uh, methane by developing uh, little uh, tiny creatures that we call uh, methanotrophs. So it depends on certain uh, parts of the world. I'm not an expert when it comes to uh, African soils, um, but I'm sure there's a huge uh, potential uh, there. Uh, now, when it comes to um, the Paris Agreement, countries getting together uh, to discuss what's the what's the way out. How can we uh, reverse this? the nightmarish scenarios mm. that uh, are pushing, that's mm. pushing our planet, that's pushing yeah. populations uh, worldwide towards uh, an absolute mm. disaster. Mm. Um, what's your message? Well, um, one of the components of the challenge of climate change mitigation is to ramp up the use of these agroforestry systems. Now, there is obviously quite demonstrated potential of how enormous the potential is for farmers to integrate trees into their farming systems. Now the issue with each of the countries, particularly in the developing world, is how much could we support the acceleration of that process? So governments could be instrumental in, um, in meeting their commitments to the climate change um, uh, agreement by, in fact, developing um, their own uh, plans and investments in helping the farm families in their, in their countries to adopt these evergreening technologies.